Ward Weld, a man who's been at centre of the news for the last two days, I'm delighted to say, joins us right now. And that is Nigel Farage, uh, former leader of the UK party and, of course, the Brexit party, uh, joining us from his home in London. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, you are at the centre of, I mean, what we've been describing here. It is a scandal, uh, the Cootsgate scandal, as we're going to be calling it, after uh, Coots Bank just told you, well, basically, we're going to cancel uh, your bank account um, because well, they didn't give you a reason. And then you were told via the BBC that it was because you didn't have enough money in your current account. Now we're told as a result of your uh, inquiries under a subject access request that it's because of your political views. Firstly, just to finish your reaction when you finally saw that. 40-page dossier from Coots, which you had to drag out of them legally, about what their, their, their thought, what their views were on your views on Brexit, Novak Djokovic, Donald Trump and everything else. I was genuinely shocked, genuinely shocked at the hate, the vitriol and the prejudice, a very special kind of prejudice. You could only get that from privately educated people normally with double-barrelled names, <laughs> living, living in the best districts of London. Who, You're who privately educated, Nigel. Yeah, yeah, but I actually understand what people outside the M25 are like. I don't think these people do. They may have the odd weekend in the Manor <laughs> House in Oxfordshire. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I'm joking, but no, actually, I was genuinely shocked by it. Uh, do you know that in that report, Russia was mentioned 144 times? I mean, this is the Russia hoax ever since the Brexit referendum, writ large. And what really appalled me was that Sir Chris Bryant, you know, that, that, that very important senior member of parliament, the fact that he used parliamentary privilege to say that the Kremlin had paid me half a million quid in one year, but they hadn't paid me a penny, um, you know, that was part of the report. Uh, many articles from The Guardian about potential links to Russia, yeah. have now, of course, all been disproved in a court of law, because Aaron Banks won his libel action against that Guardian journalist. I mean, it is it literally, the dossier is like a charge sheet that a barrister would walk into court for a criminal prosecution for. So I was shocked at it. Some of it, though, was funny, wasn't it? I mean, I like Ricky Gervais, apparently. <laughs> Re <laughs> Retweeting a Ricky Gervais tweet means apparently, yeah, you're, you're a totally an unsuitable person. What was fascinating, I thought, was the fact that you, you're, they, didn't, they didn't want you to keep an account because they didn't want uh, your, your, your views, they said, didn't align with their values and they thought there'd be some reputational damage. Well, they're certainly seeing that now. They've been condemned by the Prime Minister, the Home Secretary, the uh, Grant Shapps, the Energy Security, Secretary Jeremy Hunt, the Treasurer, the, the, the Treasury as well. There's now talk of an emergency law, some amendments to a new law, to prevent banks cancelling account holders and even threats that they could lose their banking licence. Does that go far enough? Because there's a lot of talk of, well, they need to give three months' notice, not one month. That they, they, they need to explain in full and be explicit about the reasons. But there are lots of people who are unable, you know, your former uh, colleague in, in, uh, in, in UKIP and, and the uh, Brexit party, Richard Tice with the Reform UK, Lawrence Fox uh, with the Reclaim Party, unable to open bank accounts often, people having their accounts closed, but a different reason is given. They, this could still happen if they just weren't explicit about the reason why they're closing an account. What action do you want the government to take to make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else? Yeah, well, you've mentioned some high-profile names, Julia, but remember this. Many thousands of men and women running their own businesses out there who don't have a voice on the public stage have been debanked this year. Yeah. This is going on the whole time. And the reason I chose to go public on this was because I know that something really dire is going on within our banks. I also know that as a result of lockdown, cash is being driven out of our economy. Now, I disagree with it, but that's where we are. You cannot live or function or run a business without a bank account. Yep. You become a non-person. And that's why I'm doing this. And I believe you me, this is now a crusade. First things first, Parliament is off on recess. The Treasury Committee needs to reconvene as quickly as possible. And the £5 million pound a year earning Dame Alison Rose, who is, and we keep talking about Coots, mm. but forget Coots. Coots is a little subsidiary of NatWest. NatWest have 19 million customers. And through their greed and stupidity, in 2008, we bailed them out. Every one of your viewers and listeners paid increased tax yep. to bail these people out. And now Dame Rose 
thinks she can be a moral arbiter. She can use her power and position to socially engineer the country. She needs to be called before a parliamentary committee, P. DQ. Let's get this out yeah. in the open. Well, the big question is being asked about her because you say the chief executive of NatWest, which you say, which owns a kit, uh, Dame Alison Rose. What a surprise! <laughs> a huge remainer. I mean, I'm as shocked as I'm sure you are, oh, Nigel. But God. also, what's emerged is that um, that she, quite coincidentally, I'm sure, just simply happened to be sitting next to the BBC business editor Simon Jack at a dinner the night before his story broke on the front page of the BBC website about how your bank account at Coots wasn't being closed because of nefarious political reasons, Nigel. It was because you didn't reach the £1 million uh, deposit threshold for your, your current account. Now, if that information, he, he claims sources familiar, familiar with the, the decision in Coots. Now, if that information came from her... And goodness me, it does look remarkably likely that could be the case. Not only would she have lied in that scenario, because that wasn't the reason, and the 40-page dossier makes it very clear that that was not the reason why you were losing your account, um, but also she would have been revealing details of an individual customer's banking uh, deposit. Um, uh, on both counts, should she not be forced out of her job? Uh, it's clearly a breach of GDPR. Of that, there is no doubt at all. It's also clearly a breach of client confidentiality from a bank that's been around for 300 or certainly the Coots division for 321 years, uh, you know, and, and prides itself on protecting its customers. Look, I'm not going to call for heads to roll. I want this debated in front of a parliamentary committee with the right people asking questions and with the media scrutinising every single word. Let's get to the truth of this before we start. I mean, I think we know what the truth is, yeah. but let's actually yeah. get it out there in a committee. And there is no way, there is no way that any MP or minister that is involved with Treasury functions, there is no way they should head off for a three-week summer holiday. This needs dealing with... Yeah. And let me tell you why. This really matters. The Times newspaper reported on Monday of this week that Refinitiv, which is one of the biggest global organizations that does credit checks. You know, if you went to open a bank account, Julia, this morning, and by the way, I'm very surprised and very disappointed that you've not been debanked. <laughs> who, who knows? It may still happen. <laughs> For daring I'm, I'm not I'm not mates with Djokovic and Trump. Maybe that's what got me out of it. That was my well, get out of jail card. You just don't know the right people, clearly. <laughs> um, or, or don't laugh at Ricky Gervais's jokes. No, <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> seriously, if you went into a bank this morning to open an account, that bank would go to Refinitiv to do a credit check on you, yeah. to find out whether you'd left a bad debt in Australia years ago or something mm -hmm. like that. So before you understand why they do it, right? What was announced this week is that Refinitiv is now going to work with UK banks using modern technology to monitor the social media comments of its customers yeah i think that and just think this through you know bill bloggs living somewhere in the midlands you know says something a bit spicy on facebook after a couple of sherbets mm. and, and could well find themselves not aligning with the values and purpose yep. of the bank and not being a supporter of so-called diversity and, and not being able to open an account and that's the yeah. crucial thing that what they're talking about not being able to close the account actually being able to open an account in the first place yeah. is rather crucial but, this know, is the thing, mean, you know, but we've seen but nigel we've seen this with you know social media and this uh, this urge particularly on the left yeah. to cancel people i'm amazed by the number of people um who were saying look this is a private business again we own 39 percent oh, of it but oh. it's, no no let me finish they'll say they are, this is a private business they can decide if they want to do business with nigel farage or, or anybody else themselves it's up to them and free speech isn't free of consequences and these are the consequences what do you say to that these are not normal private businesses we bailed these people out after their greed and stupidity in 2008 and now the boss of the biggest one earns five million quid a year and we're still 39 percent but, but even if we hadn't bailed them out i mean should any business whether they are wick selling us some paint uh you know or or, or ben and jerry selling us ice cream should anyone be allowed to say given they can't say you're black you're disabled, you're a woman, you're gay, I will not supply my services to you because I don't like those things. They shouldn't be allowed to say, I don't agree with your views on Brexit or Donald Trump, and therefore I won't provide my services to you. There is one fundamental difference between a bank account and Wix not selling you a tin of paint because they don't like how you look, and it's this. 
You cannot live or exist in the modern, increasingly digitized world without a bank account. Mm -hmm. And it used to be a right for every UK citizen. They had a right to a bank account until Sir Vince Cable privatized the post office. Mm -hmm. And that right went. In comparable countries like France and Germany, you have an absolute right to a bank account. So my campaign, my crusade is being fought on a series of levels, Julia, but the ultimate is we need to have something in place in this country where everybody yeah. has the right to a bank account. Just finally, I mean, we're asking a question this morning about you know what people think is the biggest threat to free speech. We saw you know with PayPal uh, cutting uh, you know closing accounts, the Free Speech Union for us for them, us for them's terrible crime during lockdown to campaign for children to be at school. I mean, what awful people they must be, you know. Um, and, and we've seen that you know the use that we saw what Justin Trudeau did uh, with uh, dealing with the uh, the truckers and the, uh, battling against vaccine passports. And, and as you say, be concerned about us moving to a cashless economy and a, a central bank digital currency. Um, there is a real concern now that actually, you know, people are being cancelled, they are being punished, they lose their jobs, you lose your bank account, you lose your earnings. This is this is leading to a massive attack on freedom of speech. Um, are you concerned uh, uh, about how this is happening? And are you concerned also, particularly, that how many people on the left don't seem to be worried about this? Well, that's true, although I have to say I've, I've received more cross-party support in the last 72 hours mm -hmm. than for any other time in my life when I put my head up over the parapet. Yeah. Anybody decent, rational and reasonable can see there is something fundamentally wrong and bad about this. And if we're not careful, we will be heading towards a communist Chinese-style social yep. credit system where unless you go along with the prevailing orthodoxy of the day, you will not be allowed to fully participate in society. And we saw a specimen of that during lockdown, where anybody that questioned lockdowns, questioned whether we should be jabbed like a pincushion, uh, anyone that questioned it found themselves banned from social media, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, and, and facing an extraordinary level of public opprobrium as you know, the, the government put the fear of God into yeah. everybody. So we've seen what can happen. Uh, and I am, I have to say, you know, I have been fighting against the grant shaps of the world for a quarter of a century right i think they're completely fake conservatives and they may and they'll say about me whatever they want to say but you know something the reaction to this has been swift it's been decisive i've even had government ministers personally texting me yeah. saying we are going to do something about this well let's so, hope that they do let's hope I'll they do finish up, i finish up by urging let's not wait till the end of recess Let's get this moving. Absolutely. Well, Nigel Farage, it's lovely to have you on the right channel at long last on Talk TV. Nigel Farage there, of course, former UKIP and, uh, uh, and Brexit Party leader joining us there.